Want to be smarter? Want to be fitter? Want to be wealthier? Want to be better? This is Infinite Transcendence, where life mastery meets humor and sarcasm with a blunt approach. This is the place where we talk about mastering your life without the usual feel-good aspect. This podcast is designed for people who want useful tips and information while being entertained. So sit back and enjoy the program. Hello again and welcome to Infinite Transcendence. Hello, welcome to a new week. Hope you're doing well. Anybody who's new and has done a patronage, thank you for that. And today I want to dive into a topic again about, about appearance. I mentioned it before and off and on about suits and how to look in a suit. But I want to talk about in specific why looks matter. I've talked about it before briefly. But, you know, I was doing a, you know, y'all, y'all live in a world, we live in a world where people say, well, looks aren't important. Looks don't matter. It's superficial. Things like that aren't important. You know, people are just shallow. What about the inside? And I think people need to really understand just how important having a strong appearance matters in life and why you want to do the best to maintain that appearance because having that appearance does so much for you. And as, if people don't like your outside, they're less likely to get to know your inside. And that's the way the world works. And it hurts some people maybe, but you got to keep in mind when you know what, when you first see a person, you know nothing about them other than what they look like. So you have to make a quick snap judgment based on what a person looks like and what you know about them. Like if you see me dressed like this, again, minus the hat or this, if I'm walking around in a suit and I'm well dressed and I'm clean and presentable, you can have a different opinion about me if I was walking around with a bunch of tattoos all over me, a bandana on my head, pants falling down, things like that, because people are going to make a quick judgment based on stereotypes and generalities, not only from their own, not only from statistics, what they've seen, but from what they've experienced themselves. A person is more likely to see me as a troublemaker dressed like that than to be dressed like this overall. So why are looks important? Now, I was watching this, I was watching this YouTube video. I was going through stuff, stuff reading. And there was this video, like this investigative report where they were going through and they were had, they had, they, they had two, two people, two actors. One was good looking and one was average looking or less attractive. This for male and female and put them in a variety of situations. And what they found was that people who are better looking were more likely to get help and assistance if something went wrong. They're more likely to get a job, more likely to get paid more, and of course, do better on dates. And also, if a crime happened, they're more likely to be seen as definitely not guilty or, or less likely to be seen as not guilty than a person who was less attractive looking. People assume that people are less attractive are more likely to be criminals, whether this is beyond because of prejudice or bias or it's because people who are probably more, people who are probably poor and less attractive more likely to probably turn into crime because of disadvantages socially. It could be a lot of reasons, but it's just a perception that people have and it's human nature as well. So knowing this and seeing this, a lot of people are depressed, a lot of people are angry, this isn't fair, you know, this is, you know, it's just wrong. You know, but that's the way life is. And what you want to do knowing this is you want to make the most out of it. Now, of course, is everybody going to be equally as attractive looking? No. There's some things about yourself that you can't really change much. You know, your height, can't do a whole lot about it. Your facial features, your so, your facial structure, you know, a lot of things are going to be hard to change or very expensive to change. And if you're a one, you're not going to become a 10, even with plastic surgery. You might go from an eight to a 10, but not a one to a 10. It's just not going to happen. But there are a lot of things you can change and you can always dress nicer, work out more, groom yourself better. And I think for most people, this makes a huge difference. Now, why do you want to do this? Well, the reason you want to do it is because of the halo effect. Uh, it's called the halo effect. But generally what that means is people have a bunch of preconceived notions about you and the better looking you are, the stronger their opinion is about you. If they see you as a more attractive person, people are more likely to see you as more intelligent, as more confident, as harder working, as a, just a nicer, friendlier, better, smarter person. They did this in class with even small children. They did it with infants who would prefer to look at more attractive faces. And also they did it with small children who were in a class with teachers and they would have the uh, less attractive teacher, like the old, frumpy, middle-aged, kind of heavier teacher. They have the skinny, beautiful teacher. They both read out of a book. And people say they prefer to have the pretty teacher look. Why? Because they felt she was smarter. And they felt she was just more caring and kind. Only because of how she looked, for the, pr pretty much. And they had job interviews where the person who was attractive looking got hired quickly on the spot. They said, when can you start? And the person who was less attractive, attractive they generally said, we'll call you back. And this was time and time and time and time again, every single time, the more attractive person got hired. And that's just the way life is. And I'll say myself, now for me, when I went and got a job, I, I never, I don't, well, I haven't had a, went out to work at a job in a long time, when I was younger, I did. And every time I went, I pretty much got, when I got to an interview, I got a job. I'd walk, a lot of times I'll walk in a place and say, uh, you know, hello, I'm looking for a job. Are you guys hiring? And they'll say, well, when can you start? You can start Monday or something like that. And I'll just get in right away. You know, and I think that makes a big impact, definitely. And people see you, not only because of how you look, but if you're presentable and you're more sociable, those things help. 
but I would definitely say there's an impact on your appearance as well. And by the way, this isn't just for women hiring men or men hiring women. This was for men. In this video, there were men, there were middle-aged, old, you know, fat guys who were successful who were hiring young, attractive men. And there were women who were hiring women who were pretty attractive. Now, you may think there's some cattiness, cattiness or jealousy, but even the guy who was hiring said, you know, first impressions mean a lot. And first impressions do mean a lot. You only get one first impression. And I talked about this in your unfair advantage. You get one first impression. So why not make your first impression the best impression? Why not make that first impression? impression count and make it stick because you only get one chance to make that impression on somebody. So make yourself look as good as possible. And they, they show this in a lot of things, hiring people, uh, getting help on the side of the road, their car was stranded. I know when I, I think it's also how you dress too, because I mean, as a guy, I think it's more for women because women are going to get help quicker than men. But I know when I, I didn't have a car stranded, but I was walking one time. I was on the side of the road walking, just going on a walk near my friend's house, and I was dressed up in a suit. I was just going on a quick little brief walk, and I had a lot of car stops say, hey, do you need a ride? Do you need a ride? And I think it's also, not only because of appearance, I think it's because it was appearance, but it's also how I dressed. I was dressed nicely, and I looked neat, so people figured that maybe something had happened, and if I was a guy in a suit walking on the side of the road, I was just going on a walk. And like if I were dressed, probably if I were dressed in more baggy, holy clothes, more, you know, more bumish looking, I probably wouldn't have gotten as much help. And of course, if you're a girl and you're really pretty girl, you're going to get help <laughs> constantly. So that goes without saying. So if you want to do better in these areas, if you want to make that first impression, you want to have an easier time making friends, you're going to probably notice in life, if you want to be people who are, if you were in high school ever, you know, people who are popular are probably more attractive looking, probably came from more well-off families. You know, people who are probably more well-off are probably more, are more attractive looking. You know, if you go to rich area, I've been in many rich areas, Live in a nice area, I know people who are in rich areas tend to be better looking. Why? Because people who are better looking probably earn more money, probably more likely to get promoted, probably more likely to sell products. You're going to be trusted and seen uh, seen as more likely to get promoted or accepted or to sell a product or just be more trusted. And they're more likely to date other attractive people. They're more people who are attractive looking earn more money on average. So you're going to see people who are attractive with lots of money, they're going to date other attractive looking people, which is why when you go to a rich area, you're probably going to see a lot of attractive people. You probably notice these things in your life growing up, you never really thought about it much. And then it kind of becomes clear. You know, you probably have an easier time. People are going to be more likely to trust you when you're highly attractive looking and you dress nicely. People are going to be more likely to see you as a, have a more positive opinion about you simply because of the halo effect. People are going to be more likely to want to help you out. People are more likely to want to work with you. People will be more likely to want to talk to you. That doesn't mean people won't talk to you if you're less attractive. It just means you can have a more favorable response otherwise. And that goes into jobs and obviously goes into dating because either you're dating or hooking up, especially for men, hooking up. Looks are for a man. Hook, looks are paramount. Women can hook up easily, even if they're not a hot-looking woman. But for a man, for a woman, your looks affect your commitment options. If you want a serious commitment, that's pretty much going to be predicated on how you look and how young you are in regards to the kind of man you can marry or commit to, whether how much money they make or how attractive they are. But for looks, for hooking up is more for men. You'll see on a lot of these sites, a lot of guys complain like they go on Tinder or they go and try to pick up girls. I was complaining, well, the better looking guys get all the girls. Well, that's how it is. Girls want the, if you're a girl, you've got a lot of options. You're going to choose the better looking guy for a, a, a fun night. <laughs> you're not going to choose a less attractive guy. You can choose a better looking guy. So all the other girls do the same thing, you know, but a, lot, a small number of guys on sites like Tinder or just out and about at a club or something, hooking up with all the girls, all the girls are messaging like crazy where most guys get nothing. So they have to get into relationships. And the same thing you said, probably see really pretty girls, you know, marrying the rich guy, the famous guy, the actor guy. And that's just how life works. Same thing with dating, same thing with if you're in a, in a crime, you committed a crime, people are more likely to see you as less likely to be guilty, you're probably gonna get a lower sentence. Unless it's, I hear if it's fraud, it's probably not. But from what I hear, you're consistently likely to get a less, a less you're gonna be more likely to get a less harsh sentence if you even get convicted, if you're attractive versus unattractive. So it definitely affects that. It affects a lot of relationships. People who are parents are more likely to take, uh, from what I've read in research, better, like, more likely to take better care of their better looking child, more likely to leave them, not leave them out of sight as long, more likely to take care of them and come to their aid quicker, probably more likely to give them nicer. Because there are a lot of things that your look affect, and a lot of it's just natural selection. People see looks as a, your, your appearance is a factor of your genetics and your health. A lot of things that make you good looking are things our body is hardwired to see as desirable because of health and fitness and fertility or, you know, virility. If you're a guy, you have your tall, you have broad shoulders, and you have a nice firm body, nice abs, nice stomach, you have a good chiseled face. Those things are symbols of high testosterone. Those things are symbols of being strong and a good protector and a, a powerful guy. You know, those are like a wide facial features, high testosterone, a long ring finger, high testosterone, your height, your build, your skin. All those things come down to a lot of those indicators of your genes and your health. If you're good, you have good-looking parents, you're probably going to be a good-looking kid, or you're more likely to be a good-looking kid. It's going to give you more dating options because people want to mate with the best genes possible. Same thing if you're a woman. Of course, your age matters because that's your fertility. But if you're young, you have a nice body, 
firm breasts, wide hips, narrow waist, you're seen as more fertile, as more desirable than if you were, you know, overweight or chunky or wrinkles. And also, if you're hiring somebody, you're going to be seen as, if you're fit and in great shape, you're going to see it's probably more hardworking and more ambitious and more confident than if you're really obese or overweight, you might be seen as lazy or as a health risk. And I have to say, as a person who's hired people, if I had two people go to a job, even myself, and I saw both were equally competent and one was a really good looking, if, even a man, if one was a really good looking man, great shape, well-dressed, you know, and versus a guy who's just really out of shape, obese, you know, didn't have the same body limit, of course it would be more like a higher better looking guy and so would pretty much everybody else. Same thing with women. If you see a woman who's really beautiful versus a woman who's, you know, more out of shape, you're going to be more like hire the person who's better looking unless the other person that waved. Now, if you're hiring an engineer and a good looking guy had no idea what he's doing and the ugly guy or the less attractive homely guy was way more competent, then you're going to hire the less attractive guy. But if you have both equal, people are going to pick the better looking guy because even for a lot of reasons, I mean, if you hire a store, you go to a lot of these stores, you see better looking people in the store. Why? Because people go in the stores. If you see a GameStop, you see a hot girl in there. How many guys go into GameStop when they see these hot looking girls trying to walk up there and talk to them? How many people go to buy products just because the person's better looking? If you have a charity fund and you have a better looking person, they get more money for charity. So wouldn't it make more sense to hire a better looking person if you're going to sell something or sell a product? Or if you're, of course, if you're an actor, or a mo obviously if you're a model, actor, actress, model, things like that. You want to sell products. You want to see a better looking person. Better looking people sell products better. You want to buy fitness equipment from persons out of shape. You want to buy uh, makeup beauty products from a Butterface. Who wants to go to a nice clothing store and buy from less attractive people? You can go and see more attractive people. That's how it works. So it's all a big subconscious and it's practical in a lot of ways reason that people are going to hire more attractive people. They're going to have more capital in the world based on how they look. But it's not all and, it's, and your looks are also how you it looks how you take care of yourself is also a part of how you value yourself. Like I said before, people judge you based on how you look. If I see a person who's well dressed in great shape and takes care of themselves, neat and healthy, they're probably more likely to be ambitious and more socially motivated and more outgoing and things like that too that also contribute to their success. So it's probably a correlation there. Or this person's out of shape. I've, I've been a gamer. I've been to a lot of activities, and I have a lot of friends who are the more nerdy gamer type. And a lot of them, you know, they're really overweight or really scrawny, really pale. They're more likely to be more introverted. Or more not introverted means something else. More shy or more out, not as outgoing, and that could also play a part in their lack of success as well. But there's no doubt that your looks do play a part in your success. So knowing this, take care of yourself, eat healthy, exercise, dress as nicely as possible. You always have to wear a suit, no, but you still can dress nicely for very cheap. These things will always bump you up at least a few points. If you're a five out of ten, maybe become a seven out of ten. If you're a seven or an eight out of ten, become a nine or a ten out of ten. And if you're 10 out of 10, you'll be off the chart. So always take care of yourself. Look good. Dress. Clean, keep yourself clean and look the best you can. Those impressions always matter. You never know who you're going to meet. You never know who's looking. You know, abuse that halo effect. Get the most out of it. You only get to live once. Make that advantage. And keep in mind, looks do matter. And, and knowing that, what do you think about that? Do you already do this? Do you take care of yourself? Do you think it's fair? Do you think it's unfair? What are some things I missed? Uh, is there anything I should, else I should have commented on? I try to keep them brief and simple as I can, but definitely let me know and always like and subscribe, join the community, check out the Patreon page and transcend infinitely. Want more? Come hang out, become a member of our community and receive exclusive content and rewards at patreon.com slash infinite underscore transcendence. Want even more? Be sure to like, subscribe and comment the video and subscribe to the podcast. Still want more? Check out the written article version and subscribe to the Infinite Transcendence website at infinitetranscendence.com for new and interesting quality content. Also like our Facebook at Infinite Transcendence and follow us and follow our Twitter at transcend underscore world. Keep watching and listening. See you next time and transcend infinitely.